Good morning tubers, welcome back. Now after releasing that video last night uh, about these discharges and the packs and a bit of an update and stuff, I had a few questions about these devices. So I thought, it, I thought I'd pop the actual heat sinks off. Um, I've had this one off before because I actually added more thermal paste. I added a lot more thermal paste. They seem to me quite cheaply designed as they probably are considering their price. So I think I've done about in between 10 and 15 full cycles of cell 5 testing these units and trying to get some footage and I'll, I'll release that footage after this video I'll edit this in at the beginning and then I'll put it in later um, it's not all that so if you don't want to watch it just sort of disappear after seeing this so this is the cables that I actually used yesterday so I don't know what diameter they are they're just off speakers or something like that and then I had another piece of cable that went to the other end now the standard cables that we got, uh, if you had a look at the, the earlier videos, um, they were very very small and got very very hot so they weren't very much good. But we'll plug it in, so the power goes in the back. Now one of the things that <laughs> got me when I first got it was, there's a D DC in there Jack. There's a D, well there's a, well I don't know if they're DC in, but they're DC DC. And there's another one at that end, so there's three jacks. So it's actually the one at the end that you plug in, that you plug in um, and then that should turn it on if you plug it in properly and it's got the screen there so with the screen it's very very basic so you can see in this corner here is 194 now that is the amp hours that I've taken out of it cumulative and 7.15 hours so seven and a seven and a quarter hours it's been running for and 672 watt hours um, but to reset those figures with this one, all you do is hold the button in for a few seconds and then it resets it all back to zero again. Um, but the only other functions it actually has is uh, one's a fine adjust and one's a coarse adjust. And of course there's no load on it, but you can, you can tune it to whatever amps that you want to discharge at. And then you can, I think it's that one there is the, the coarse adjust and that one there is the fine. It's got a little piezo there so you can actually hear it buzzing and whatever else. And then on this side it's got a bunch of different imports. So it's got mini USB, micro USB, uh, just normal USB. And then of course the two inputs that I used. Both models have um, two fan inputs so you can run a bigger fan or whatever. I definitely think if I do this again, I'm going to get rid of those bloody lights. I think I'm just going to cut the cables. Sorry, Jaron. I'm going to cut the cables. Drive me crazy. I know they're your units, but it's not going to affect them running at all. Um, now, uh, this one here, uh, this one here still works fine. Now, if I unplug this, plug it into this one, plug it into this one. Should have just got another plug. Now, this one still works fine, but what happened with this one was it didn't actually break so much as. Um, if you keep clicking this button, it says uh, BL off, which is backlight. Oh, I can't even show you that one. Backlight off. Yeah. Wait a minute. Where is it? You hold the button in, and it turns back on. Guess what? It won't turn back on. So I don't know if that's something that I did or whatever, but. The unit itself still works fine, it just the backlight doesn't work. So again, that one's got the fine, of course. They are identical units, they really are. Once one, one is sold as 20 amps and one is sold as 25 amps. The only thing I can see different is the size of the fans, maybe. And I think I proved that yesterday when I put that fan... I swapped the fan over, so I put that fan onto that one. And that pulled 25 amps, or almost 30 amps when I first started it. So... There we go. Uh, what else can I show you about these units? Um, if you turn them over, turn them over, you can see which one I've used more. Now that is not good at all. I actually got big burn marks on the back of the PCB and that burn mark corresponds with these two MOSFETs or FETs or whatever you call them. I really don't know. I won't pretend to be electrically minded. Um, there is a bunch of writing on the back of it. Most of it appears to be foreign. It just says 36 volt, pay attention to safety. Um, oh, there's voltage in. Oh, there we go. If I had read the back of it, it's 6 to 12 volts on the input side. So I would have known that that, that was the, to power the unit, but you get that right. Anyway, tubers, 
there you go that's a quick that's a better look at those devices now the next test I'm going to do I'm actually recharging this cell 5 again now the big problem with charging cell 5 is the fact that I've got to use my IMAX and it's doing 3.4 amps I've only just turned it back on for the morning so it does take two or three days to actually recharge um, as you all know I got antimatter from bang good the problem with that is it blew up so I've ordered the parts I've ordered the new capacitors and stuff that blew up from soldering electronics I strongly suggest you don't buy from them unless you want to pay a lot too much but they got here quickly and that's all I wanted so I'm gonna fix that up so I can charge that quicker so somebody asked me if I could do a 10 amp discharge on that just to see so I'm gonna do that that was a question in the last video and I'm also going to try and do a video or a time-lapse or something of going completely dead flat on cell 5 and then trying to bring it back a few times so see if I can take it all the way down to 0 volts and then charge it back up to 4.17 as that does I'm not can't really remember what that actually charges it to because it broke before I got much use out of it so I'll do a couple of full flat full discharges that's if I can get that running because if I got to use that it's going to take too long anyway tubers if now we're going to go to a bit more stuff with this if you don't want to click the like button and head out and if you do want to see the rest of it continue the play button and hit like anyway cheers tubers so we have got cell 5 that is approximately 4.2 volts change them so they're a bit easier to see they're both the same audio crank it all the way up uh, that one is saying it is 3.52 volts and that one is saying it's 3.7 volts well that has two cables on each one and this one only has one but these wires are slightly thicker um, but they also go to the other end of the battery so, so we got one doing 25 amps and one doing 26.5 amps so we'll let that run down and see how long it takes this one here appears to be getting much hotter than this one we have got our thermal camera set up over here so we're doing a time lapse see how that goes as well again this is a, just a more of a test of the the FLIR camera doing a time lapse because I've never really done it I have got it charging up the charger doesn't last very long unfortunately and it's already dropped a bit so we've got the little we've got the 518 650s which is almost required right uh, charging the FLIR camera because that needs a charger and then we've also got the iPhone so it actually charges the iPhone as well so hopefully that keeps running we're about half an hour into the test and I got my clamp meter out this was a sponsored unit from Banggood or a supplied under whatever you call it there we go so 24 amps on that and it's saying 24 amps there and that one's saying 25.6 so let's see if we can get that around there 25.2 25.6 not bad considering that's two cables going through that so it looks like the amps are quite similar uh, there we go we're about 45 minutes into this test we got 24 amps pulling from that one and 25.6 still from that one well 3.3 and 3.5 volts and we have still got the thermal image up there so we've got a couple of cables that are getting warm but certainly not hot and certainly not as hot as these original cables on the first couple of tests that I have done all right there we are we're an hour and a half into this test uh, let's have a closer look I should pull out the instructions and have a look and try and work out what that actually means and the instructions are useless so we won't be using any instructions and we'll be simply guessing as to the results of this test so it is still going well there is not too much heat in these units at all even though I had to take one of the fans off so I could actually record that screen and I just hope that can actually see it and just because that doesn't doesn't give me any option to put the temperature on it just shows me where the heat is so my desk is 30 degrees those cells are 30 degrees so it's not much hotter on there 40 50 60 degrees and cables and stuff 35 so the cable the cables and stuff like that are only slightly hot oh the, that term those terminals are a bit hotter what about terminals on this one 
Yeah, got some got some warmth in those terminals by the look of it. Oh, that's interesting. Anyway, it's not showing up on the thermal camera. Horrible. So we'll let it keep it going. Again, don't know what sort of voltage these drop out at. I think it's about 2.9 volts. So we'll keep running and see how cell 5 holds up. Right here, welcome back tubers. We are two and a half hours into this test and we somebody got tied up watching YouTube videos trying to catch up and we have got 2.2 volt, 2.02 volts, 1.95 volts on that one and it says 59 amp hours and this one was that 2.18 and said that 76 amp hours for some reason let's stop this test now and see what the resting voltage comes back up to yeah okay, there we go after a couple of minutes it come back up to about three volts on both uh, if I'm going to run the test again I will make oh that's interesting where's my thermal camera Radio tubers. One thing I didn't notice when I finished this video was the heat coming from the battery. I'll take the power out of all of them, and of course you can't see me doing this at the moment. Radio, we have got the battery, and that's been resting for about three minutes before I realised it. Some of those cells are almost 50 degrees. And that was on a 50 amp discharge. Uh, granted it is hot in my workshop at the moment and having Bitcoin miners and stuff running as well. Maybe I won't redo the test. Here we go, this is the negative side. Let's see if we can see where I'm pointing. And it's hotter through the middle than it is on the outside, I guess that stands to reason. That's hot enough to worry me. I can, if I if that was a cell and that was in my IMAX, I'd throw it out. That's so hot, and it's hot all the way along, and it's hot on both negative and positive side. So we'll grab the thermal camera and we'll see if we can have another look at those cells just there, down that end. So those cells in that area there are smoking hot. I just wish this had the facility to put the temperature on the screen. Hey look, when you play with it, it does have the temperature on the screen. Let's see if we can hit video record on that. Looking like 53, 54 degrees. That is insane for such a low load. 54 degrees, that's not good. Scroll down to that end, goes down to about 40. Flip it around the other side. Fifty-four, fifty-nine. 59, those are almost 60 degrees back there somewhere. I don't know if you can see that, you can't see it. Hopefully you can see it on the camera footage. It's flipping around. 52. That is pretty warm. So tubers, that's not really a review, it's simply a video. You better get after it and press that like button. I'll see you on the next one. Cheers.